As SpaceX is getting ready for the fifth integrated test flight of Starship, everyone is hyped to see Super Heavy perform the first catch attempt back at the launch site at Starbase. But in today's video, we're going to be concentrating on the ship. More specifically, we're going to be talking about Ship 30, which will be the ship that will fly on Flight 5. So today, I'm going to be talking about the major upgrades and changes to Ship 30 compared to its predecessors, looking at all the testing that happened, and finally, what is all about those heat shield tiles. Along with that, I'll be using my Starship 3D model to show all of this in better detail. So without further talking, let's get into it. Hello everyone, just want to say that a lot of information in this video is taken from the Ring Watchers, so if you want to take a look at their articles, I'll put a link in the video description along with the article using this video. And one more note, these things that I'm going to be talking about can or will change, as SpaceX keeps making changes and progress with everything happening at Starbase. After all, we are just in the testing phase of the Starship program. And with that all out of the way, let's get started. First off, what is Ship 30? Well, Ship 30 is the next ship prototype and the one that will fly on Starship's fifth test flight. This is also the first in the 30 series, which will be the last ship series before the Block 2 slash version 2 ships start to come online. As the time of editing this video, SpaceX just rolled the first sections for the first Starship Block 2 ship prototype. We saw the payload bay being rolled into the high bay on the morning of the 13th of July, and we saw the nose cone being rolled out of the star factory on the 14th of July. A really cool thing to see is that SpaceX is continuing the numbering scheme that we saw with Starship Block 1 with Starship Block 2, the next ship being Ship 33. Now today we are not going to be talking about Starship's version 2 or version 3, since today we are only talking about the changes to Ship 30, but in the future I might do a video on that. In the 20 series, we saw the ability to launch a full stack to orbit and land the stages with reentry ticked off the box as well. Now let's take a look at the new changes to Ship 30. First thing to see is that under the Pez dispenser section, a new vent and vent pipe have been added to the liquid methane tank of Ship 30 right next to the crew access hatch, extending from the top of the forward dome as seen in this image from John from What About It. Now the pipe that you see in this image is not yet confirmed where it's going, but I quickly modeled here what I think this could be. Again, this is pure speculation. If you have any idea where this vent pipe could end up, let me know in the comments. And speaking of vents, a new vent pipe has also been added to the ship's liquid oxygen tank, which also features a new valve design compared to what other ships previously used. Looks like there is some extra hardware near this vent, but it's not confirmed yet what it will be used for as the time of writing the script. This vent looks highly familiar to the vents used on Booster 13, but it's not known yet why they made the change to these new vents on Ship 30. Okay, now let's move on from the new vents. Let's talk about antennas for a moment. Do you remember the small arrays of heat shield tiles on the ship's nose cone? Well, behind the tiles, there are actually antennas. These have been now removed and repositioned on the ship. Also fun fact that you probably didn't know, is that there are actually another pair of these antennas on the opposite side of the ship, but since they are covered by the heat shield tiles, you can't see them. These antennas are now relocated on the payload bay section of the ship. Again, there is another pair on the heat shield side of the ship, but again, still covered by the ship's heat shield tiles, so they are not visible once the ship is completed. Another change happened to two onboard cameras. The triangular camera block mounted near the ship's payload bay had two cameras which got removed. On previous ships, one camera would be able to look at a hinge of a forward flap like we saw on the SpaceX IFT4 livestream, and one that we saw on the suborbital test flights looking down at the aft section. It seems that these camera angles are not necessary anymore, and SpaceX decided to remove these or they were probably just relocating them somewhere on the ship that we can't see. As I said in the intro, SpaceX is always making changes, and this is true as it recently added 4 new camera blocks mounted on the ship's nose cone and aft section. This might be to look at the flaps to see if there is any damage during entry. After all, this makes sense as the ship is now equipped with a new ablative layer underneath the new tiles. We will talk more about that in the next segment. I didn't have the time to create a new render showcasing the potential views that we could see with these new cameras, but now with the new tiles, it kinda makes more sense. Now there's probably other hardware changes like inside of the ship, but currently we don't know that yet. But hopefully as we get closer to launch or even on the SpaceX official livestream, we'll get more information on that. Before we talk about the testing with Ship 30, let's discuss a very important topic, and that's the heat shield tile replacement. Now the reason why SpaceX is doing this is probably because Ship 29 still didn't survive re-entry 100% intact. So here's what they are going to do. To understand this a bit better, let me explain how this works. 
SpaceX doesn't just install the tiles on the ship's body and it's done. No, here's how it works. The tiles are made out of aluminium and silica fibers. First, SpaceX workers attach attachment pins to the ship's body and then they add a layer of white insulation material. Only after they will attach the tiles. So what they are doing with ship 30 is to remove the ship's tiles as seen in this picture taken by Starship Gazer and after that they will add a new ablative layer that will replace the white insulation material. After that they will install the new tiles which apparently Elon Musk said that they are 2 times stronger than the original tiles. Now keep in mind that these tiles are only being placed on the hotter spots during re-entry as ablative material is not that good for visibility. But currently SpaceX has other priorities with the Starship program and they want to survive re-entry with the ship being 100% intact. Ok but now enough of tiles, let's talk about ship 30's testing. During the editing of this video I found out that there's no videos of the first two tests that we're going to be talking about. So I'll probably just overlay some footage of previous tests or some info on screen. The testing campaign for ship 30 started this year. On December 30th last year, ship 30 rolled out to the Massey's test site. This is in preparation for a cryogenic proof test of both methane and oxygen tanks, which took place on the 3rd of January this year. Now, by the way, cryogenic proof tests consist of using liquid oxygen in the oxygen tank and nitrogen in the methane tank to verify the structure of the vehicle before further testing and eventually flight. They won't use methane as it's flammable and nitrogen isn't, so it's way safer to do these tests. It also saves some liquid oxygen in the storage tanks by only using it for the oxygen tank and nitrogen in the methane tank. After that, on the 6th of January, Ship 30 conducted another cryogenic proof test of both tanks at Massey's. Then, in between the 9th and 10th of January, Ship 30 was rolled to the rocket garden. Then it was moved to the high bay for engine installation before being rolled out to the launch site for more testing and eventually a static fire. On the 1st of May, we saw Ship 30 making its way to the launch site to be placed on the suborbital test MB for testing. On the 7th of May, Ship 30 conducted a partial cryo test. It had its main tanks only partially loaded with nitrogen and liquid oxygen. After that was detanked, the vehicle's tanks were loaded again but with liquid oxygen and methane for the static fire test. But then the test was scrubbed due to an unknown reason and it was postponed for the next day. Then, on the 8th of May, just one month before Starship's fourth test flight, we saw Ship 30 conduct a six engine static fire at the launch site. And by the way, this was the last ship test that occurred at the launch site. All testing after that were moved to the Massey's test site, as SpaceX is currently constructing the new Tower 2 at the launch site. After that, Ship 30 was rolled back to the high bay for final flight preparations and for the tile removal that we already talked about in the previous segment. Now by the way, the ship that suffered an issue during a cryo test was not Ship 30, that was Ship 31, the next ship after Ship 30. This was probably an electrical fire issue on the ship's raceway. As the time of recording this video, Ship 31 successfully completed a cryogenic proof test at Massey's on the 2nd and 3rd of July, with the second one having some venting action as well. Just a few days before publishing this video, Ship 30 rolled out to the Massey's test site and performed a static fire test of all six Raptor engines. Along with the static fire photos, SpaceX released an insane video showing the ignition of all engines from a bottom perspective. Just listen to this, this is insane. SpaceX always surprises us with this insane footage. Also recently, Elon Musk said that currently Flight 5 of Starship is scheduled to take place in roughly 4 weeks, so we're talking about no earlier than August. But we're probably talking about Elon time, so we'll just have to wait and see. Just one more thing before we end off this video. If you want to learn more about how SpaceX will catch Super Heavy with Mechazilla's chopsticks back at the tower, check out Ryan Henson's Space's new video on that topic. I'll put a link in the video description when it comes out. Ok, so to recap, SpaceX on Flight 5 wants to fully survive re-entry. With all of these fixes, we'll hopefully see the ship finally survive re-entry 100% intact. And again, if they don't, they will always learn from it. So what do you think? Do you think that these changes will help? Leave your answer in the comment section below, I always love reading them. Also let me know what's your favorite change, and even if I missed something, I mean SpaceX is always changing things, so yeah. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to help me continue to do these videos you can simply give the video a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel, it really helps the channel grow a lot. 
If you want to further support and get access to working progress previews of what I'm doing, go to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash kindlineguard. And if you want to see more renders of mine, go follow me on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Happy rendering and see you all next time. Have a nice day.